So a study came out recently that said uh, metal fans are happier than everyone else. Now, there are some flaws with the study. One, if someone is not happy with their life, they're unlikely to participate in a study like this. They also claim to have investigated other fans of other music, but I'm dubious of that. If you were a fan of Millie Vanilli in the 80s, this is, by the way, 80s metal fans, groupies from the early Motley Crue days and all that. Um, if you were into Millie Vanilli, you weren't a fan. What I think is really going on here is fans are happier than everyone else, and that is enthusiastic people. There is some real merit to enthusiasm. And what I think a lot of us don't realize is that the pop culture that we like and listen to isn't made by deities that have been plucked out of heaven and dropped down with us. It's made by the fans. Virtually every superstar that you like, virtually everyone that someone is a fan of, used to be a fan themselves. Uh, Andrew W.K. will sit for hours signing autographs and posing for pictures with people. And I asked him once why he bothers with all that, because it, it'll take all night sometimes. And he goes, I used to be one of those guys. I heard uh, Benicio Del Toro say the exact same thing once. He was, he was posing for a photograph in the middle of dinner and he goes, I used to be that exact guy. That's why I have absolutely no problem with uh, doing that kind of stuff. Um, Chuck D, the man behind Public Enemy, he used to design flyers for bands and he would go to their shows and promote their, their shows and after a while he thought maybe I should start doing shows. This is back in the late 70s before rap really existed. So he was making these flyers and seeing this culture be born and thought I want to be more of a part of this. The same goes with uh, Ludacris, the rapper Ludacris. He used to be a DJ called Chris Lova Lova. And after going to shows and, and playing records, he used to always DJ at Freaknik. And he would sort of talk in between songs and then he sort of kept dragging that out and thought, maybe I'm going to be a rapper. I want to have records out too. I'm a fan of this music. I want to start making it. Um, we saw the same with Iggy Pop. Iggy Pop was a huge music nerd. He would go see blues shows in Chicago and Detroit and uh, Ann Arbor. And he saw this drummer Sam Lay play once and he thought, Jesus Christ, Instead of just doing rock, let's invent a new kind of rock. And he got all his favorite drummers and bassists and guitarists from different bands and formed the Stooges, which I'm going to say started punk. I, 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 I mean, I can't prove that, but would we have punk if we didn't have the Stooges? Um, same with Morrissey. When he started out, he doesn't, didn't really want to start a band. He wanted to be a music critic for NME. That was his dream to review shows at NME, a magazine he's since been on the cover of dozens of times. And after a while of going to shows with his notepad, he started to try picking up a microphone, and that's why we have the Smiths. Uh, and it's not just music. Look at this picture that Kathy Shadle posted recently. This is David Lynch as a little kid getting to meet his idol, Vincent Price. This is what culture is. This is what pop culture is. And I know we usually talk about politics on this show, but don't trivialize pop culture. It's an integral part of who we are. In fact, Andrew Breitbart said, everything is downstream from the culture. Uh, and I was talking to Nick Gillespie from Reason Magazine, the editor there once, and he said, I wish I was talking about real stuff like pop culture. And then I thought he was kidding. And he goes, think about it. No one knows who the Speaker of the House was in 1935, but everyone knows who Shirley Temple is. So don't trivialize this pop culture. It's relevant, folks. And it's not just music, and it's not just film. Even, um, like, Fred Armisen was obsessed with John Waters when he was a kid. When he was 13, he read that John Waters said the ultimate compliment to him would be if someone threw up in the theater uh, watching one of his movies. That got Fred Armisen into, into alternative culture and punk rock, and now he has Portlandia, and he's working on his own network. This guy's a geek. He's a nerd. He's a fan. He's a groupie. And we saw this too with uh, talk show hosts. Kimmel was just trying to do Letterman, who was just trying to do Carson. Carson was a huge fan of Red Skelton and Jack Benny. He was trying to mimic those. The common thread we have all, throughout all of these is enthusiasm. We need your enthusiasm because when you're really into something, you make cool stuff. And when you're really into something, then you're going to be better off. It's beneficial for us and it's beneficial for you. Get into stuff. <laughs>